This is a video I have been wanting to make since the height of the AI art panic, but I got scared. I was worried by coming out with a potentially controversial take or opinion that in the process I would nuke this channel. A bit irrational in hindsight, I've shared semi-controversial opinions in the past, and if anything, my channel grew from it, but whatever. My point is, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, and with the discussion heating up again, I refuse to let this opportunity pass again. Where the fuck? The discussion is over. By the time this video releases, before we get into opinions, let's talk about the basics. What am I even talking about here? AI, or artificial intelligence, has been developing for the past few years now. And all the way from the Google Homes and the series of the world, all the way to something way more advanced like ChatGPT. When discussing AI art and when people refer to it, they're generally talking about a program of some form that is designed to generate an image when given a specific prompt. Basically, when you give these AI artists a prompt like Sonic holding a banana, it starts similar to a search engine, looking at each word in the prompt and looking up examples from whatever database it's hooked up to. In most cases, this database is usually just the Google Images tab. So, just as an example, the AI will look up Sonic in Google Images, then it will look up Holding, then it will look up A, and finally it'll look up Banana. From there, it will then try and find crossovers in that data. So it might next search for Sonic Holding and then a Banana. Then it'll choose several examples from the searches it did and cross-reference them. Cross-referencing the Sonic and Hold searches with Sonic Holding something in order to find the most relevant and accurate way to combine those images. Then, it will finally bring it all together, combining the entire prompt into usually a selection of nine or so images with slight differences meant to try and fulfill the prompt. Except it does all of this in roughly 10 to 30 seconds, which is about the time it took me to explain it, maybe. We'll see how long that part of the video is. <laughs> but because these programs basically work by laying image after image over each other and kind of melting them down like a giant melting pot, it results in a lot of mistakes that a human artist just simply wouldn't make. For example, a common way to identify AI art is through bad anatomy, where oftentimes a good chunk of AI art will just either add extra body parts, or even just overlay body parts or things like that, but basically in some random mistake because the AI wasn't precise enough that it didn't know it should erase or get rid of something, or simply because it's just that cheap and crappily made of an AI that it just happens. Another way you can identify this, and a bit more of a common thing that ends up happening, is what I refer to as melting colors, which is where colors just kind of melt into each other and merge in a way that just wouldn't happen if there was an actual person that, sitting there coloring in the artwork. A great example of this is this AI image of Asuka from the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. I found by just simply searching up AI images of the character in Google Images. Now, I will admit, uh, the reason why I was searching that was because I was trying to find a really popular one, at least on Twitter, that I had f that I had seen back at the height of all of this, but I couldn't find the exact one that I was looking for or had been talked about back then. In this image of the character, you can clearly see on her shoulder and chest, her hair just becomes red like the suit, instead of staying orange. Not to mention the random scar or hair strand across her nose, or the odd eye extension at the far edge of her left eye, or the fact her right eyebrow cuts straight through her hair. And speaking of anatomy, comparing the head to where her shoulders are, that would mean her neck would be like this. Though some people can also mistake anatomy, myself included, so uh, don't assume it's AI just because of wonky bodies, okay? For another example, let's look at this other random image I found of the same character while searching for the previous image. From a distance, this image looks pretty okay. Generally, anatomy lines up well enough, and there's no inherently obvious flaws. 
However, when you start looking closer, you can see lots of odd colors and details that just no human would really make. First off, the left side of her suit has this odd edge that is literally just not colored. Instead, sharing the color with the wall. A human artist wouldn't just not color to the edge of the line like this, especially in such a broad and seemingly important area. Going up the image, you can see the O2 on her chest, where the, Z where the zero, instead of being the normal stylized zero that it is on the suit, is instead broken apart in a way similar to a six almost. Just above that, to the right, there's a random strip that comes from her suit collar and down just over her right breast. That is colored in the browner color of her hair before melting into the color of the suit closer to the breast. This is a seeming attempt at the straps on her arms the suit has, as you can see the exact same thing on the opposite side, but colored correctly. You can also see on her shoulder between the strip and the green line, the same coloring mistake was made. And finally, despite the fact you can see from the right side of the image her hand is supposed to be red, her right hand up in her hair not only becomes the same color of her hair, just like the strap we mentioned before, but it just straight up becomes hair. The same texture, style, and everything. But enough about how to tell AI art from real art. Now that we know what it is and how to identify it, why do people hate it exactly? Well, the main accusation is that AI programs designed to create art often steal art from other artists. This has been seen in numerous cases where there have actually been like I said, cases, where the AI art, in terms of its prompts, when giving the results for a prompt I meant, will just straight up give art that people, other people have made. <laughs> and that's, and that's relatively more tame, at least in my opinion and in many others' opinion, compared to the other cases where AI art has been used to literally try and force dead artists to basically keep making art by using the, the dead artist art as a database to create, to allow an AI to create more art in that same artist's extreme, sometimes extremely specific style. Such as the work of traditional Korean artist named Kim Jung Ji, I hope I'm saying that right, I'm sorry if I'm not, who had passed. In honor of his work and legacy, the family asked artists who were inspired by Kim Jung Ji's work to make art inspired by him and post it to social media. Three days later, an AI art generator was made using Kim Jung Ji's art as a database to be able to forever create things in the now deceased artist's iconic style. However, a lot of the claims come from the fact that AI art, by definition, cannot be original. Just, it, it absolutely cannot be original. And this is because, like I mentioned earlier, AI art needs to create art by combining different references within a database. Thus meaning that it can't create anything truly original, it can only meld together existing images into an attempt at a new image. However, while this fact, the fact that it can't be original, is completely accurate and is factually true, it's also completely stupid. Mostly because all artists actually use multiple references, at least any artist worth a damn. Many artists make art using several references, whether it be a jacket they want on their character to wear, or a specific post they're just not sure how to draw. For example, let's take my channel avatar. This channel avatar has always been, and always will be, drawn by me. And this was the original version. I made this avatar with one main goal in mind, trying to get into the world of animation. As such, I knew as a newbie to the whole animation thing at the time, I should aim for a simpler character that would be easier to draw. So I started with a character very similar to the Odd Ones Out character. Then, to make it more original, I added long hair and decided to make it skin colored. Oh dear, that looks wrong, let's add some clothes. I knew, I knew I wanted blue pants, but what color should I make the shirt? It would look weird if it was blue again, so I'll just use green. 
and thus the character. While there was originality behind it, it still started with a base of other references. Even the more recent version of the Avatar, now wearing dark colored pants with a red shirt and a blue thumbhole jacket, is referenced from my own wardrobe. I wear a thumbhole jacket every day for my job as a hospital janitor that's vaguely darker red colored, slightly purple, and I decided to make the jacket blue in the Avatar because it's my favorite color, while still referencing the reddest inspiration with the shirt. Physically, there is no difference from what I did versus an AI referencing the odd ones out and a similar pants and jacket to what I would wear combined with long brown hair. Would it result in the exact same? Probably not. There would probably be at least, a vi at least some differences, but they would end up looking very similar, which is the exact same thing that would happen when two different artists sit down with the same set of references and just put their own creativity into it. And if that referencing is considered stealing when an AI does it, it's only fair to call it stealing when an actual artist does it. <clears throat> Which, while it may be accurate, is also an extremely necessary thing for art as a whole. Even expert professional artists will use a form of reference at the very least in terms of things like anatomy dolls to help with poses, which, in itself, is another form of referencing and thus stealing under this definition. This does not excuse the legitimate cases of stealing that does exist, but it's just pointing out that stealing, in the way that is problematic, literally ripping other artists' art without their permission, is still wrong. This is just saying that if real artists are allowed to reference, we can't then say another form of art isn't allowed to do the same thing. The real problem with AI, the way I see it, is the fact there currently aren't rules for AI art. If another artist, real artists, tries to steal from another person's art, we blast them on social media, we sue them for copyright infringement, we can make sure that they get punished. But with AI, we just can't. At least not right now. Like I said, there's undoubtedly a problem with AI art that directly steals from artists and tries to push other artists' creations off as its own. And I absolutely think it's wrong for someone to take someone's art, drawings, or voices and try to use it for AI purposes when the artist specifically says that they do not want to use that. And if you do it anyway, you are scum. You are a bad person. But you know what? I think we should all just take a quick breather and, you know, take a walk outside for a moment. During the Industrial Revolution, a lot of people, mainly rich capitalists, decided that nature was obsolete. And as such, they opted for more space, to get rid of nature, for more spaces for things like parking lots, buildings, businesses, all that sort of thing. And that's when we started to see a pivotal change in the conversation into environmental conservation. Where a lot of people said, hey, you know what? We're doing a lot of damage to the ecosystems here. Let's try and do something to fix that, shall we? In my city, there are three or four parks in various directions within walking distance of my house, which is roughly two miles, I figure. And each of those parks is home to nature that anyone, that anyone is free to come and visit and it's freely upkept by the city. Well, not freely, taxes pay for it, but you know what I mean. It's upkept by the city. And even though they may have some artificial structures, such as playgrounds or even this theme park. And that's not even to mention the fact that that back that way a lot more, there's even a zoo who's, who has an invested interest in maintaining the safety and security of animals as, as well as the nature that goes with them. Because if they don't, well, no one's going to come into the zoo anymore if all the animals just die off. And even parks like this one actively embrace being able to be upkept even further by the city in terms of actually keeping the local ecosystem in check while still providing a sense of nature for citizens. 
and even encourage citizens to get in on the action to help support and keep this place alive and thriving. And this doesn't just apply to my city, which is relatively small. Even some of the largest cities in America, such as Tampa, Florida, or even New York City, have gigantic areas dedicated to keeping parks and at least grass and trees and such in check to ensure that nature can in fact survive. My point with this whole little diversion is that real art, traditional art, art made by people, doesn't have to fight for survival against AI art. Just like how we've seen with nature and industry, the two can in fact coexist. There will always be people who prefer art made by a human hand, just like how even in today, with traditional art as in paper art versus digital art done on tablets and, so and all that sort of thing, there are people who will only ever accept art made on paper or canvas with paint, acrylics, whatever, and they'll only ever accept that as human art because it's made with the blood, sweat, and tears of the artist smeared across the canvas. It will always have a place and the two can coexist and they absolutely don't have to cannibalize each other for the sake of one being superior. And we already see companies pushing back against AI art. This goes from small independent creator companies such as Meriwether Media all the way up to huge corporations like Boom Comics, which does comic, which is popular for comics such as the Ben 10 and Power Rangers comics, as well as Garfield. So we are seeing large companies stand up for individual human creators' rights against the AI threat that seems to be out there. And just like when McDonald's switched over from actual chefs to frozen patties burned by teenagers, large companies will start to adopt more and more AI art. However, because they recognize that it's cheaper to use and cheaper to make, and they'll be, and that's the role it'll play. People don't go to McDonald's because it's the height of fine dining. They come to it because it's cheap and mass produced. That's why they come to McDonald's. And so, just like McDonald's, while larger companies will start to use more AI art, most people, if money were no object, would just hire a chef to make food for them that can actually put their passion and sweat into it. And that will always be the distinction. Large companies that are willing to use AI art because it means being able to offer a cheaper product of a lesser quality versus small to mid-range companies who will almost always support real artists when they can and when it's reasonable to do so. In the end, artists will never go anywhere and there is no reason at all to fear. Yes, in the short term right now, some people will lose their jobs. Big companies aren't going to keep artists around that they're not actively using or having work on anything. However, equally, there will be other companies there to catch and support those artists in their time of need, as we've already seen. And the reality is, artists have always had it tough in this world, but no matter what, art is important, both for society and for culture. There's tons that we know about culture purely based on the art that people make. And so I promise you, no matter what happens, no matter what companies reject you because they decide to go with AI, and no matter what happens, you are extremely, extremely important in everything that you do. Even if you don't exactly feel that important when working on your 20th furry porns. Are you kidding? I... Fuck it. Your 20th furry porn commission. There. I'm not recording this again. <laughs> <clears throat>